mentioned the month and a half in re of rehearsal, which I, strikes me as extremely unusual for a Hollywood film these days. And I'm wondering, what, what, did those, what did that month and a half consist of? And is that something you've done in your previous films? Um, I, I, was it a month and a half? Oh, sorry, I, yeah, I said a month and a half. I just yeah. wanted to clarify. We had about three weeks of rehearsal. Uh, I had a month and a half before we started shooting that I was just talking yeah. about my own, you know, my personal preparation. Yeah, we did about three weeks, and, and most of those three work, weeks were not, you know, like, let's tape out on the floor, so there'll be a bed here, and there'll be a pillow over here, and there'll be a lamp. You know, we, we didn't really do that at, at, at all. It was more like... We never got it off the table. Yeah, it was kind of like, like well, what does table. he mean when he says this, and why is he saying it now, and, and, and you know, what exactly... What's your intention, and is that the best way to, you know, is that the best way for this person at this moment to, so it was really about just tearing at the fabric of the text and saying, I understand that this is now, or this chronologically happens here on the page. Is it better being a line earlier or a line later? Just, you know, asking those questions. And, and you know, Sorkinese, as, as I like to, <laughs> to refer to it, is really not about, it, it's a different kind of way of communicating because in a lot of cases, these are characters who are thinking aloud. And, and so you need to know kind of from whence they are, what inspired them to kind of get on this role. You know, I, I like to describe it as, it's not a character uh, presenting a wall of bricks. It's like a character with a dump truck dumping a ton of bricks on the, in the audience's lap. It's like a lot of this, um, the notion of, um, and, and what, makes these, what made these guys special and what made it obvious that there was no one else to play these roles was you could see that they could talk about one, two, three things simultaneously and be thinking about a fourth and a fifth, you know, and, and that's what it required to make it. So the rehearsal time was really mostly about how do we dovetail all these words. I wanted to ask Jesse and Justin, what were the challenges in playing uh, characters that people may think are big assholes? And also for Justin, uh, have you given up singing? Are, are you going to be singing with Yogi Bear this December? Is, is acting your whole thing now? I was hoping you were going to ask me about Yogi Bear. <laughs> I'm glad that we just can get that out of the way with the first question. Did you want to... Uh, um, Sorry, Jesse, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, uh, well, you know, it's impossible to, to play a role and to kind of look at it, in, not only in the way that you described it, but look at it uh, objectively at all. Because, uh, um, you know, I had the kind of unique position to, you know, my main responsibility was to not only understand where my com character was coming from, uh, but be able to defend uh, all of his positions uh, and his behavior and ultimately sympathize with him. And over the course of the movie, and um, really over the course of this kind of publicity experience, I've developed an even greater affection uh, for my character. <laughs> you have no choice. I mean, it's really, it's, it's impossible to disagree with a character that you're uh, portraying. Um, you know, we shot the movie for about five and a half months and they're very long days and you're spending a lot of time working hard to defend your character's behavior. Uh, so even if the character is, uh, you know, acting in a way that hurts other characters, uh, you still have to understand and, you know, uh, ultimately sympathize with all of that behavior. It's just impossible to play it any other way. Uh, just, just to add to what Jesse said, I think it's fundamentally the same uh, application uh, for myself. Um, it became clear to me after my first reading of the script uh, that um, there was going to be... Uh, the version of this person, uh, my character, in the film, that uh, he wasn't uh, sort of the uh, hero, uh, so to speak. And but no one sits behind. Uh, you know, I obviously I'm not. You, you never play anything sitting behind a laptop. You know, twirling your mustache. Um, I think that, like Jesse said, it doesn't matter. That that's the beauty of this film, to to me, just uh, that that you really get to pick um, sort of who you side with. And, and I, I had a friend who recently screened the film and, and said to me, I thought it was one of the really telling things as soon as we walked out, he said, you know, I don't agree with anyone in this movie, but I don't disagree with anyone in this movie. Speaking about all the characters, and I think that's what, what kind of makes 
uh, the dynamic of these three characters tick. Um, but uh, I, I, I feel like, you know, you defend your character. No one, no one believes that what they're doing is wrong um, in life, and 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 so I feel like. Yeah, I also you I, attack I, it that way. I also, t I mean, again, a, a, you know, the character is an asshole is s such a reductive um, and overly simplistic way. I mean, uh, you know. I, it's pretty easy. F I mean, I, I have no problem saying that I think Eduardo Saverin had a failure of imagination. And I think at some point there was going to be a fork in the road for those two guys. And, 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 and I don't think that Sean Parker was, was overly Machiavellian. I think that what he's saying and how he presents himself is a perfectly reasonable, as somebody who's been through it and who has, you know, had a had a Napster and lost a Napster, you know, here's a guy who's saying, this is the big leagues, you know, and it's great that you have friends from your dorm, and it's great that you have college buddies, and it's great that you had somebody you could turn to and borrow $19,000, but this is the bigs, and you have to now realize that if you want to protect what it is that you've invested so long and so much of your energy if you want to protect that, you've got to have the support of people who know what they're doing, who can navigate these waters. And I, we're very conscious in the scenes not that Sean never advocates himself as the guy. He comes to say, I'm a fan. I'm coming to say hi, and I'm saying, watch your back. These guys, they don't want you. They don't want some 21-year-old kid, kid telling them where the future is. They want your idea, and they want you to, you know, they want to sideline you. That's what it is. You know, that's, that's the VC world. And, and so you can say that he's, I think he's charming. I think all of these facets are true of this situation. I think, I can't imagine that Mark Zuckerberg ever said, well, how do I screw Eduardo out of this? You know, I, I think what he said was probably, I am up to my eyeballs trying to figure out how to make this thing work and how to get it on, you know, 60 million, you know, laptops. Like, how do I, how do, I do that? And a bunch of guys came to him and said, hey, your buddy, who put up $19,000, he can own 30% of something that's worth a million dollars, or he can own 0.03% of something that's worth $10 billion. Do him a favor. Hi, Mary Skowinski with scottfeinberg.com. I was just wondering if any of you maintained personal Facebook pages, and if so, how addicted to them are you? Uh, I, I put up a Facebook page the, the day that I, I signed up for the movie. I, I didn't have one before. Um, I, honestly, I, I didn't know much about Facebook. I'd heard of Facebook the way I've heard of a carburetor, uh, but <laughs> I can't pop the hood of my car, point to it, and, and tell you what it does. So I, 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 uh, the first thing I did was start a Facebook account. I kept it up all during research, during writing, during photography, uh, uh, and then took it down. Um, I had a, a similar experience. I signed up for Facebook, um, you know, the first day of rehearsal, uh, so I can understand what my character was talking about. And uh, when we started shooting, um, and I had to learn all those lines, I stopped using it. I've seen it <laughs> over someone's shoulder. Um, no, I don't. I don't have Facebook. I um I I was uh, you know your 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 usual general kind of Facebook user um, I'm sad to admit and uh, I've been three months clean. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm proud of myself too. And like, it's okay, it's no big deal. It's just like I'm in the third step. Hi, which is early. Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but now I don't use it because I was I was, uh, you know, <laughs> it was just negative for me. <laughs> it was like it is for most people. Uh, I don't have a personal uh, Facebook page, but it is nice to know that uh, you can, you know, um, in through the world of philanthropy, for instance, that uh, you can send out uh, a message and, you know, for instance, raise money for free health care for kids. So it is a fantastic thing that way. But no, I don't have a personal uh, Facebook page. It's hard enough to do voice work in um, animated films at the same time that you're... <laughs> Um, so I did the double duty of it all. I just didn't have time to look at pictures of my friends. 